In this video, we're going to look at troubleshooting a microwave oven. Now, this is a Kenmore, but it doesn't matter because all microwave ovens operate the same. So this is universal repair of a microwave oven, and uh, you can apply this uh, technique to pretty much every microwave on the market. So today I have a Kenmore microwave oven that is uh, totally dead. Came in from one of my neighbors, wanted me to take a look at it. So um, they said it just trips the breaker. So we may have a blown, could be a couple of different things. It could be, uh, could be one of the capacitors gone bad. It could be a shorted switch that's gone bad. Anyway, I haven't plugged it in. We're gonna to to pull the top off it first. So what we have on this is a conventional microwave oven design with a conventional transformer. So a very simple circuit. I'm just going to grab my one of my meters here for testing. And we'll look for uh, we'll look for short circuits. So blowing fuses is generally caused by a couple of different things on these units depending on what has faulted. It could be a switch that's gone bad. In that case, it typically just blows the main fuse. It also could be a failure in the high voltage circuit. Maybe a magnetron that's shorted. Maybe a stack diode that's shorted. Maybe this high voltage capacitor that's gone bad. Before poking our fingers into one of these units, keep in mind that the capacitor in here can hold a charge. So we want to make sure that we short circuit the capacitor before poking our fingers in and touching anything that could be energized. I'm just going to take my uh, pliers and never use pliers like this, okay? That's a good way to get electrocuted. The one time that I did get hammered by a microwave transformer was when I was using a pair of pliers at the shop that I was at that the, the handle had a crack in the insulation and the owner of the shop just wrapped tape around it. That wasn't good enough. But in this case, I'm not going to touch anything metal. I'm just going to make sure that the capacitor is completely dead shorted by putting the, the leads of the, or the tip of the, the pliers in there to make sure that it is completely discharged and then I'll disconnect one of the leads. Gotta see what I'm doing here. You gotta push the little pin up. Okay, now that one lead is disconnected, I can measure the capacitor and see if it is shorted. So I'm just using my own meter to measure the capacitor to see whether we have a short on here. And it doesn't look like we have a short. So the capacitor is probably okay. Even on the, uh, I'm on the 60 mega ohm range on this meter. I was watching the cap charge up. It looks to be the cap's okay. So the capacitor's not shorted. So the next thing we'll check is we'll check the stack diode and see if the stack diode is shorted. So I'm just going to measure between the chassis and the because one side of the diode goes to ground, so let's measure between ground and the diode here. To make sure that there's nothing shorted there. I'll test it in. I tested in 60 mega ohm range, and then I'll also test it in diode test range and see whether there's any shorts here, which there's not. So we'll look to see if there's any shorts in the magnetron, and again, uh, that's tested pretty much the same way. We're looking between because the magnetron. The two wires here go to the filament. Well, one goes to the filament, and the other one has the high voltage on it that goes to the, the uh, cathode, and then the anode is ground. So if we measure between one of the leads here and ground, there's no short circuit. So the magnetron also likely is not at fault. So now we can concentrate on switches. Maybe we have a, a bad switch. More than likely, we have a bad switch. Let's check the fuse here and see if the fuse is... Uh, so that's continuity. Fuse is not blown. Interesting, normally if a switch fails on it, it blows the fuse. But we'll check the uh, door switches on this thing and see. 
<laughs> Maybe there's no problem with this thing. Wouldn't that be something if it was a problem in their outlet that was bad and not the microwave itself? I guess we can try it and see whether it works. That might be the first thing, right? Uh, I didn't plug it in when I got it to service. I just took it apart. Let's uh, put some power to this thing and plug it in and see what it does. Of course, when we do things here heavy duty, well, we use a heavy duty extension cord. Now that's a heavy duty extension cord. That thing's not gonna overload. So I've got a glass of water in here. Let's just plug this in. Ah, so we blew the fuse so we know that there's a problem. I think we probably have a switch, a short switch that is uh, popped. See, I didn't even turn it on. As soon as I plugged it in, it stripped the breaker and killed the rest of the lights. So I've just got my, my backup light here. Let me, let me reset the power. We'll check some switches on this thing. What's interesting here is that there's no dead short when I measure between the pins of the cord. There's no short. Yet, when I plug the power in, as you saw, it immediately blew the breaker. If I do it again, it'll trip the breaker, I'm sure. So, clearly, there's a problem, but it's, I can't, I check it with my meter and nothing happens. Now, the fuse is not blowing on this because this uses a 20 amp fuse, not a 15 amp. And my circuit breaker is 15 amps. So we may have, but well, we obviously do have a problem, uh, but it's not, there's no short until there's power applied. So we'll remove a screw here, and then we should be able to lift off the front panel. Aha, now I can get at the switches. Ha, ah, here's what I'm looking for. Here are the switches of interest, right here. Turn this thing around a bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. So I want to check these switches to make sure that they're actually working and that they're not sticking. So just unplug them and I'll just put my meter in continuity mode and we'll check for a switch and see if it's open or closed and then we'll, we'll activate it. So that one here should be open, which it is. And if I close the door, that switch should close. This is the primary interlock switch. So this one should close, which it does. Okay, so that switch is okay. We'll just open the door again so I can swing this panel out of the way and we'll move down to the other switches. The second switch should be in the uh, shorter position when the door is open and the open position when the door is closed. I don't know which one's which, but I do have here stuffed in the door in the front of the unit here, they have a schematic. How cool is that? When's the last time you saw a schematic included with an appliance? I can't think of forever when I saw a schematic included with an appliance. Cool. But not least not the ones that I worked on which were all Panasonic. Okay, we've got our power coming in here. I'm just looking at this here. There's a Two thermal cutouts, primary interlock, which is the upper one. And then there's the monitor interlock switch and power relay. And I'm just looking to see which one the monitor switch is. There's three switches on here. It'll have two white wires going to it, the monitor switch. And where is it? I was going white and yellow. It's probably this one here. It's going to be the second one up here. This is the monitor switch. The third one will be to stop the timer, I'm pretty sure. Is it showing on here? Uh, oh yeah, door switch. Door switch lower. So if we look on the schematic here. Uh, top switch, upper, monitor switches in the middle, the door switches to the lower one. 
all the door switch does is it just does it provides control I believe yeah for the uh, the panel so basically when you open the door it stops the timer from counting and that's the switch down here so this is a monitor switch up here and this one should be in a shorted state now but when I close the door it should go open so let's just test it I bet it's shorted even when the door is closed and that's why the fuse is blowing so we put the meter on here and it's shorted and we'll close the door and test it again and I bet it'll still be shorted because that's going to be the problem with this unit meter in here oh yes it is there we go that's the, that's the problem monitor switch is shot so let's see if I can find a monitor switch for this thing I'm probably gonna have to go and buy one because I don't think I have one I might I might have a monitor switch but let's just see which one this is oh I've got to take the whole switch block out this might be easier than I thought it looks like on this one there's just a switch block and undo a couple screws and the switches should lift out Okay, here's the here's the switch block. And I should be able to just pop this switch out. It's this one here is the one that's bad. So there's the monitor switch there. It's out. What the monitor switch does, it's shorted. Oh, now I just clicked it. It just opened. But what the monitor switch does, if we look at the schematic for this thing. So, the power comes in. Here's our main power coming in. And it goes through our, our, our thermal cutouts here. There's two thermal cutouts that will open if the oven overheats. That way, if you've got a fire inside it. And then your power comes into your primary interlock switch. Now, from here, it'll go down into the transformer for your low voltage for your controller. This is your control panel here. Primary interlock switch. When you open the door, this switch opens. That's my meter shutting off. When you close the door, the primary interlock switch engages. And you'll see down here, here's the monitor switch. And the monitor switch goes through to ground. So basically, how it works is when you close the door, the monitor switch opens slightly before the primary interlock switch closes. When you open the door, the primary interlock switch opens first and then the monitor interlock switch closes and shorts. The reason that you have these two critical switches is so that there is no possible chance that the high voltage transformer can be activated with the door open. Now, when could that happen? What, what could cause that to happen? Well, if your power relay here were to get stuck in the closed position, if the contacts were to get welded shut, you would have power constantly going through the transformer. Primary interlock comes on, it goes through the transformer, through the power relay, and then returns to neutral. So if the relay were to get stuck closed, the power transformer would come on, even though the fan wasn't running, and it would have microwave energy. You pull the door open, well, you're going to cut the power to the primary, primary interlock is going to cut the power. But if your primary interlock were to fail and your power relay was in the on position and there was no monitor switch there to short and blow the fuse, then you would end up with microwave energy exposing you to very hazardous microwave radiation. So the monitor interlock switch's job is to make sure that there is not a snowball's chance in hell that voltage could ever be applied across this high voltage transformer when the door is open. And that is why it is wired where it is. It's not wired across the transformer, it's wired across the, power, the, the primary power supply before it even gets to that power relay. If the primary interlock switch fails for any reason, the monitor switch's job is to short and blow the fuse. 
Now, had the primary interlock switch been the cause of this one to fail, when I opened the door, this switch would be shorted, but it's not. So we know the primary interlock switch is working. The problem on this one is just the monitor interlock. Now I gotta go get a new switch, put a switch in, and that should fix this unit. So here's a new switch. See, here's the, the FUBAR switch. Here's a new one. That's how it's supposed to work. The other one's kind of, as I say, it's kind of FUBAR. This one's called a, a highly. Okay, normally closed. The other ones, some of them have a second contact here. This one's been clipped off because it was a dual purpose switch. So it could be used for either the primary interlock or the monitor switch. Let's reinstall this and make this unit work. So we just insert the switch. Like that. Back into the, the cabinet. Into the switch holder. I've got to release this little catch here. It's got a plastic catch down here that has to lock into the, the hole here in the switch. So we have to press this down in here and get it into position and then I just have to move the catch out of the way enough that it can engage. The switch is now back in place and it's solid so it can't move. So now we can install the switch block assembly back into the unit itself. are in place and now I can put the screws in to hold the bracket in place here. And now we'll plug in the, the power connectors. These are keyed, right? So they can only go in one way. Right, so there's no mistaking which ones go where. that back in there. We'll close the door and we'll plug this thing in and watch it go boom. No, it won't go boom. It will now work. Okay, let's set this thing and uh, heat some water up. Uh, I guess I have to set the clock first. Okay. Um, clock. Okay, here we go. We'll set the clock. I don't know what time it is here. It's, uh, what is it? It's, uh, it doesn't matter. It's 6.15, but we'll just set the clock. Okay, uh, clock. Press start. Okay, now that's set. We'll just put some time cook. Put on for like one minute. The microwave comes on. We'll heat up our not microwave safe glass of water and uh, verify that everything's working and then I can put this thing back together and take it back to my neighbor across the street. I don't have to go far with this one and uh, make them very happy because they say they bought this at Sears and of course Sears has gone bankrupt and they've closed all the stores so um, they were told good luck getting it fixed. Well it's really not a problem for anyone who knows a little bit about microwave ovens these things are actually pretty simple. 
uh, with the exception of maybe the, the, the panel failing on here, everything else on here is readily available. The capacitor is readily available, the magnetron is readily available, they're just normal standard parts, right? And for that matter, you could pick them off an old one to make them work. So, it can be done here in three seconds. End. Oh, guess what? We still have a problem, Houston. We have a primary switch, I think, that, uh, or, the, or the short switch tripped before the primary switch. Uh, this is more of a serious problem now because that means that that bracket is probably deformed and that's why it tripped the switch before I pulled the, before I opened it, it didn't open the primary switch before tripping the other one. Damn. But to answer the question, yes, the cup of water is hot. So the microwave is working. We'll just get that water out of the way so it won't get spilled on anything. I have to pull this apart again. Um, I'm sure that that new switch that I just put in has just blown to smithereens and uh, I'm going to have to replace it again. But the problem is, I'm more concerned now that this bracket, this plastic bracket that holds them is deformed and it's not releasing this other switch first. Well, the good thing is here that the switch is not shot. When I activate the switch, okay, my switch is not blown. What about my other switch here? I think it's working too. It's just, I think what we have here is we have a bracket that has, that has deformed because Here's our normally open switch, and when I close it, it's working. So the, the new switch hasn't failed, and, and the reason that that hasn't failed is because it's a much heavier switch than what was in there. The original one was only rated a couple of amps, and this one here is rated at 20 amps. So it didn't blow the switch, didn't blow the fuse, or didn't, sorry, it didn't, it didn't blow the fuse in the microwave, and it didn't pop the switch, but it did trip my circuit breaker. Uh, when the what happened here is when I went to pull the door open the short switch closed Before this one opened it's it's activated through this the Catch here on the side when the door opens right this one's supposed to release and pop out of the switch first Right but normally they're in like that and when you pull the door open this switch is supposed to lift up first So it lifts this up and as you pull the door open, it's supposed to release this switch first before the other switch releases. But what happened in this case is this switch closed first. Uh, basically how it works is when this is pushed in, it's pushing up against this other switch like that. If you look at, if you look at how the, the switch is engaged, they're, they're pushed in like that. And as the door opens, it's supposed to release from this switch first before the before the door opens enough to engage the other switch. Okay, with the uh, the bracket mounted again, we can demonstrate that there is still a short on here. If I put my meter here on the, the, the prongs of the plug, like this, when I pull the door, before the door opens, it closes that short switch. See that? And that's what's going to blow the fuse. So what the problem is, as I predicted, it's this piece is worn. You can see this little groove right here. This piece is worn, as is the other side down here, this hook. Now this is where the door catch goes in and latches down here. And the bottom hook, the bottom catch, pushes this switch in. As you pull the door, the, the door hooks are lift up, but what's happening is because this is worn, there's a bit of play there. So you get you can pull the door a bit and it'll actually engage the switch, which will put a short on the line before this one opens. So what I'm gonna have to try and do, I don't think I'm gonna be I'm probably not gonna have much luck on this unit because it's a Kenmore and it's a series is out of business. I'll try some of the appliance places and see if any of them have this part in stock. I'm not holding my breath that I'm going to get one, but that's the only way I'm going to be able to fix this thing, I think, is to replace this bracket. I changed hundreds of these things back in the days when I was repairing microwaves. The, the, the door, the switch bracket was a very common failure. 
and replacing that will fix this unit. Now, if the bracket's not available, I may be able to build this up and make it work for a while. I may be able to build this up with some epoxy over top of it. It's just what happens is there's a little bit too much play. So when the door is pulled, right, this is what kicks open the, the latch. It's what lifts the latch up, which, of course, when the, when the latch lifts, that's what disengages the switch. But because this little bit of a groove is worn here, and on the one on the bottom here, there's a little bit of play, so the door can pull open enough to cause the switch to close. So if I can build up with just some epoxy along here, just that fill that groove in, I may be able to uh, give myself enough clearance that this bracket will work. Because, uh, again, I'm not holding much hope that I'm going to be able to find one of these brackets. I am going to contact the parts store tomorrow and see if the local parts place that carries parts for many brands would happen to have one of those. But in the event they don't, I want to see whether this will actually make this thing work. We'll be able to test that in this video now and see if it works or not. But if it, even if it does work, if I can get the bracket, I'm going to replace it before sending it out. Now, even if I do give the unit back with a repaired part, if I can't get a replacement, it's not in any way going to affect the safety of the unit because if the epoxy were to fail, it's going to just blow the fuse, right? So I'm just hoping that by building it up a bit for the worn portion, it'll allow the latch here on the door to lift because that's what, that's what, uh, that's what this, what the bracket does is as you pull on it, it lifts this up, which is what disconnects the primary switch. What's happening now is as you pull it, the second one here, because of the clearance, is allowing the short switch or the uh, the interlock switch, the safety interlock, to activate first before this lifts and disconnects the primary interlock. So by adding a bit of buildup of epoxy resin, well, I'm just using JB Weld, which is pretty strong stuff, it should allow this to lift before the door opens enough to disengage the other switch. Okay, if we look at it now, hold the, okay, got rid of the, I've got rid of the play. I have no more play here. So let's uh, try putting this thing in and see whether it uh, shorts out when I open the door. So I'm just going to uh, remount the bracket. I'm just going to put the screws in here and I can test it. Okay, the meter is on. Make sure I'm connecting up to the power cord here. Okay, that's me. My, prob my probes are shorting. Okay, let's see what happens when we uh, close the door. When I open it, no more, no more short. We can put power to this thing now. And watch it blow the fuse. Okay, we got power. No blowing fuse. Let's uh, put a cup of water in it and test it. A cup of water in here. We'll set the uh, clock. And time cook. Say one minute. There we go, we're heating it up here. Let this run here, verify it's working. 
open the door and hopefully we won't blow any fuses which I won't because I've already opened the door and if it was going to be a problem it would have already happened so this unit is now functional and it it would it would work for a while until that epoxy wears down which could be a while before it wear, actually wears down ultimately I'd like to get the right bracket for it I'm gonna try but I'm gonna end the video here because I may have to order the part I'm gonna go tomorrow into one of the parts appliance parts places and see if I can get that bracket for it and if I can then I'll put the part in but uh, I might be waiting a while if I could order it in so if it works here we're going to end the video here because I've showed you guys what goes wrong with it and how to fix it. So there it is. It's going to stop here and open the door. No fuses blow. And oh yeah, it's warm. Uh, that's it. We'll, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon. Bye for now.